right. Okay. So tonight we have the three uh, candidates for vice director, Scott Yanley, who's with us here, NASY. And then the other two will be joining us sequentially and they'll be the only ones here. Uh, Scott suggested this format and the other two guys uh, sort of agreed with it. So that's what we're gonna do. And um, we're gonna give them uh, 20 minutes and then uh, throw them out. <laughs> so that being the case, let's just go for it. Go ahead, Scott. Okay, I hope you've got me on share the screen and we'll get started. And hopefully everybody is seeing that. Yep. I, I yep. take it everybody is. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. And first, let me say thank you to the Arrow Club for hosting this. Uh, it's always great to uh, be a part of every club uh, in, uh, in the Great Lakes Division. So I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, my name is Scott Yonley, and 8 sy And why vote for me for vice director? Well, we're going to delve into that just a little bit. And uh, I think you'll, you'll see some reasons why. First off, family support is absolutely vital uh, in jobs like this because, quite frankly, without it, uh, you can't do the job effectively. My wife of 49 years, Janie, KB8YPW, obviously is a ham, and she's also an ARRL member. We do have one daughter, Wendy, who's married and with three children. Now, I do have a couple of fun Michigan facts for you guys. Uh, first off, uh, 49 years ago, Janie and I got married in Adrian, Michigan. We were too young, believe it or not, to get married here in Ohio. But uh, Michigan welcomed us, and, and uh, we've been kind of a, a, a Michigan person, if you will, uh, ever since. And the other Michigan fact is in my professional career, I'm a retired automotive and aerospace quality manager and engineer working for companies that supplied component parts to GM, Ford, Chrysler, General Dynamics, and Alliant Tech Systems. I routinely traveled all over North America visiting with customers and suppliers and working to resolve issues and being the customer's first line of contact when there were problems. I know firsthand how to work as a team player with customers in stressful situations and, and, and actually achieve successful results. My amateur radio experience, I'm representing amateur radio for more than 40 years, and I am a life member of the ARRL. I'm currently the Ohio Section Manager, Great Lakes Division Assistant Director. I'm an ARRL official relay station and emergency station. I'm also the webmaster for the Ohio section and the Great Lakes Division, as well as several clubs and organizations. I am also a, an ARRL extra class accredited volunteer examiner. There's many, many other activities that I'm involved in. So please, I don't want to list them all out here. It would take too long. See my bio on my website, N8SY, or, or I know I sent a bio to Dan. Uh, take a look at that. You'll see some of the accomplishments. Our Ohio team produces a weekly newsletter for ham operators that's distributed throughout the country. You don't have to be an ARRL member to receive it. In last year, I was honored to receive the Joe Knight Distinguished Service Award for my work as section manager of Ohio and my leadership contributions to the ARRL and its field organization. I am one of only nine section managers in the country to have received this award and it does hang proudly over here to my right. Um, I've supported Carol Perry with her Radio Club of America Youth Activities Initiatives through the years, and have assisted her in showcasing many talented young hams. One of them's down there in that left corner, Chris Brault. Very proud of that young gentleman. Uh, this is a picture of when he received the Hiram Piercy Maxim Memorial Award. ARES Connect. Working regularly with the staff at ARRL headquarters and our field organization throughout the country as an instructor and troubleshooter for ARES Connect, I've conducted numerous online webinars to teach our volunteers how to take advantage and make this new system work for them. Listening and acting on your ideas and needs, many changes have been made to the system to make it easier to use. Working together with your own SEC, Max, K-E-8-D-O-N, We've created an easy to use reporting program for admins. This has already saved our leadership teams around the country hundreds of hours 
and da in data gathering for their monthly reports, it's also given us a much more robust and uniform reporting system as well. I wrote a comprehensive article about ARES Connect that appeared in the July 15th edition of the ARRL ARES e-newsletter. Many new volunteers signed up after that was published. So why am I running for vice director? I truly love amateur radio and the ARRL. That's why I'm a, a life member. I'm troubled at our membership numbers. There has been a 7.5% drop in membership in the Great Lakes Division alone since January 2016, while the amount of new licensees have grown substantially. I'm seeing a clear lack of leadership at headquarters. It's like we're floating around in an ocean without a rudder. I feel we need a more take charge leadership, giving us better yeah. service, guidance, and goals. I feel we've missed the target with the new on-the-air magazine being a member-only magazine. This should be a gift to anyone thinking of becoming a ham. It's a great tool for all of us to use to promote amateur radio and the ARRL. And I'm troubled by what I feel is a lack of transparency. Now, I know that's an overused word, but quite frankly, it's not only from the board, but also headquarters too. I've learned a lot through Carol Perry and her youth activities, and I feel we can do much more to grow our youth. I've been a part of several ERISA's programs here in Ohio and have seen firsthand how our youth is willing to learn and be a part of amateur radio if we give them the opportunity. I also know that we need to find ways to entice the 27 to 50 year olds as well. And I believe Dan even wrote an article about that some time back. We need to bring fun back into amateur radio. Yes, we do have a serious side, but we need to have fun as well. Most folks are turned off by grumpy old men with attitudes. We have to change this perception if we're ever going to get younger folks involved. It never ceases to amaze me to see how much talent there is within the Great Lakes Division. We need to do a better job of tapping into that talent to make ARRL and the Great Lakes Division one that shines above others. I want to be a part of the team, not only to strengthen the ARRL board, but to bring more openness within it in our Great Lakes Division as well. I have attended hundreds of ham fests and club functions, and I'm always listening to what you think and feel and utilizing those ideas with our team to improve what we need to do to better serve you. This is what I want to do as your vice director. My record shows the experience working as a team player with volunteers, leaders, and government officials, listening to them and finding ways to improve. I have a proven track record of dedication and follow through even when the work gets tough. This is the type of leadership that it will take to tackle the issues moving the ARRL and the Great Lakes Division into the 21st century as a team. None of us have all the answers, but together, as a team, we can tackle the biggest problems and really start to move the ARRL and the Great Lakes Division in the right direction. I do thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I would appreciate your vote for me as your next vice director. Please don't hesitate to contact me anytime with questions or concerns. I'm here for you. My email is n8sy at n8sy.com and you can also find a full detail bio about me at n8sy.com. You can also find many clubs and people who have endorsed me there as well. That's it for my presentation. Now it's time to hear from you guys. What have you, what's on your mind? Well, I'll start off. So Ed, if you read my blog at all, you know I'm, I'm a big, one of the biggest problems we have with the ARRL is membership. So, and, and I've, I've suggested several times, or many times actually, that we set a membership goal. And so I'm just wondering what you think about that. My membership goal for the next couple of years would be to bring it from the 20.7% that it is right now up to at least 25%. That's and exactly what I've written. You got my vote. <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> we need to grow it. Guys, we're falling backward, and that's not the way we need to grow. Look, one in five are ARRL members. Just one in five. Yeah. We got to do better. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, I, I'm always amazed that I never hear anything about that from anybody. And, you know, and in fact, 
one, one of the, the latest uh, uh, AWR annual report it said, oh yeah, we only dropped by so much. That was ahead of our goal. And it's like, no. You know, you, if you talk to the three section managers here in the Great Lakes Division, I'll tell you frankly, we're all deeply concerned about it. We are. And, you know, we need the tools from headquarters to turn that around. And, you know, one of those great tools is the On The Air magazine. And they went the wrong way. They made it membership only to get it. And it's like, man, that's, that's not right. We got to turn that around. Yeah, every, anybody should be able to, I mean, it's a digital product, so it doesn't cost anything. So yeah, got I'll, it. I'll, that. I'll, I'll cede the floor to anybody else that wants to ask questions. So I think there's a question from JWB at TK in the chat. So Jay is asking, how do you intend to tap into the talent in the Great Lakes region? Okay, with our newsletter uh, that we put out every week, uh, we're tapping into yeah. Kentucky, to West Virginia, and even some parts in Michigan, but I wanna expand that. Uh, let's tap into it even more. Let's get those folks that can write and those folks that can do videos and that, and let's get them start working on that. Look, there's a ton of things that this group, your group alone can do. I mean, I'm listening to all the different things that you guys are into. And guess what? It doesn't take anything to produce a Zoom video anymore. It's just, it's so simple. And you can teach people how to, how to use a, an antenna analyzer. You can teach them uh, the Raspberry Pi and, and all of those things. And we're already starting in some of those programs here in Ohio. Um, I will tell you, my uh, section youth coordinator uh, has been involved nationally with ARRL uh, in producing several videos that should be coming out, we hope, uh, within the next month or so. Uh, it's been 13 months so far in project, and we're hoping that they release it soon. And it's all about how do you get involved in, in contesting? And what does it take? And what's the best software out there to use? And, and those type of things. It's all great hints and kinks of about what it is to contest. Those are the kind of things that this area is rich in. We are so blessed in the Great Lakes Division. I can tap a, a hundred people on the shoulder right now and get something out of each and every one of them. Any other questions? Come on, guys. It's not, I mean, it's a free for all tonight. Come on, you got your chance. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I can ask a question, Scott. As, sure. Um, as a vice director, what do you feel like your voice is at headquarters and on the board and everything to, to, to change, you know, to, to affect the change? Well, we're hoping to make that difference in the fact that. I'm, I'm not one that's going to sit in the back seat. I'm not one that's, I'm going to be a team player. I want to be in the co-pilot seat along with the director. And I have had chats. Uh, I know Michael Coulter is on tonight, or at least he was. Yeah, there he is. He's on tonight. Uh, he's running for the director. And I know Dale, uh, obviously, Dale and I have had conversations, as well as Michael Coulter and I have had conversations about how do we tap in and what are we going to do? Okay, both sides have told me that it's going to be a team play. We're going to have to step it up. We're going to have to bring more work into it. There's, there's no other way of doing it. You've got to have that work ethic in there and say, you know, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to make the Great Lakes Division shine. We're going to show what we can do that the other divisions aren't. Guys, four years ago, the Great Lakes Division was the sixth largest. It's now the seventh. Uh, why should I want to spend that much money? Okay, uh, I'm seeing a, a, a chat. I hope you don't mind, Anish, if I go ahead and, no, and go catch right that. Sure, okay. sure, go ahead. Um, well, you know what? That is a tough question. That's an absolutely good question to ask. Why is it that $49? Well, you know what? They the board kind of kind of gave a discount to uh, the seniors, but I got to tell you, they missed the mark. They missed the mark. You have to have 25 years in and you have to be 70 years old. Good heavens, guys. 
even Social Security tells you 66. I mean, <laughs> come on. You got to start about giving... that too, by the way. I'm sorry, what? I wrote about that too, by the way. I said that was <laughs> Dan, I know it sounds like you and I have, have collaborated together on this, but we haven't. Honestly, we have not. Yeah. But I got to tell you, they, you know, it's just common sense stuff. We need to get a discount for the seniors, something that's worthwhile. Um, $900 for a senior that's on, living on Social Security isn't going to cut it, guys. And if you look at the actuaries, he lives to a, a, a ripe old age of 79. Okay, nine years at $50. That's 450 bucks. That's what it should have been. Yep. How are we going to make a difference? We've got to start providing better service. That's the first thing. Discount for youth. Absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. The youth does have a discount somewhat, but we need to strengthen that, especially those who, like Chris Brault, for example, those who really bring things to the table. We need to do things better and more for them to encourage the youth. Look, we've got four uh, campuses, uh, universities on board here in Ohio, but you hardly ever hear from them. Um, because there just isn't a whole lot of activity going on. And especially, I understand now with COVID, and, and they're pretty much locked down and can't really do much. However, in 2019, we didn't have COVID. Uh, we need to start doing more with the colleges and more, like I said, with the 27 to 50-year-olds too. Hey, guys, think about this for a minute. At 27 to 50, that's where, you know, they've got a house, they, they've got their kids, They've got a secure job. They got a little extra spending cash to spend. So you need to tap into that source. And Dan, I think you wrote an article some, I, I remember seeing an article coming out of you several years ago about that. Uh, I know you don't remember it because we, we talked about that before on another conversation, but I, I do remember an article coming out of you about that. So yeah, I'll, search um, my, I'll search the blog and see what I can find. <laughs> well, I understand that because I write a weekly newsletter as well. And, and, you know, to remember what we wrote two weeks ago, I have to go back and refresh my memory with the, with the notes. But um, just like that, we, we need to now start highlighting what is it that the Great Lakes Division does? How often do you hear about what, what all's going on in Ohio or what all's going on in Kentucky? Um, you don't. You're not hearing much. Well, we produced a newsletter that's, that's not only telling you what's going on in Kentucky, but what's going on in West Virginia. The other eight land person, okay? Keep in mind, Kentucky's four land. <laughs> the Great Lakes Division got, got Kentucky, the four land. So we also have a uniqueness when it comes to QSL Bureau because we have two QSL bureaus. Uh, in the Great Lakes Division. We have the four land and we have the eight land. So, uh, you know, we need to offer more services at not a reduced price. We need to offer those free. QSL Bureau should be free. Send your cards to them. They take care of it. I think that would be a good idea. I received something and I just got back into being into ham radio uh, after years of not doing anything in, in that 27 to 50 year old group, I was not active at all. And uh, not too long after getting back into it, I got something from, I guess, a QSL Bureau. Uh, it was like it was requesting money from me to send, uh, for me to send cards or something like that. And, yep. you know, I just basically, I just ignored it, you know. Because I, well, yeah, right. You know, I don't even know if they were for real, you know, at the, at the time. And maybe they were, but I had no way of confirming it. Yep. I, I, I get it. I hear you. And we need to start doing more things for our people. 
um, statewide SET. Uh, yeah, we're we're working with with Michigan and so on in the SET this year. Uh, where we have uh, also gained the respect of uh, FEMA down in Washington, D.C. They are going to send us some messages uh, this weekend. So, and uh, we were given a heads up, and I'm not, I don't think I'm blowing anything too secret here, that we might even expect to get a message from the President of the United States. So, uh, that would be pretty impressive for us, I got to admit. And I will tell you, the, the, the coolest picture I have is the ones, uh, it dates back four years ago to the National Republican Convention that was done in Cleveland. I don't know if you folks are aware, but uh, amateur radio was involved with that. We, we, were, we went uh, and we were told, we weren't asked, we were told we will be a part of the Republican National Convention. And we were, uh, we had communication set up from from Cleveland to Akron Red Cross headquarters, to Columbus, our state uh, EOC, to the Regional Operations Center in Cincinnati. And we had voice communications going on uh, every hour, uh, check-ins and, and making sure and, and updates and so on to, to what was going on. So we were a direct part of all that happened there. Uh, okay. There's a whole story on that in CQ Magazine. Yes, Dan? Uh, I think your time's up. Okay, no problem. And I thank you all for your attention. And I would appreciate your vote when the ballots come out. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yep. All right, so we, we do have, uh, I think, KAJH here joining us by phone. And are you there, uh, Jim? Well, we can't hear you. I, is anybody hearing him? May have his phone on mute. He's not on mute in the in the meeting. Right. Good morning. Hi, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know, Jim. You're the your your little box is lighting up, but we're not getting any audio. Maybe we can. Have the other speaker. Yeah, um, I tell you what, Jim. Uh, maybe if we can try going for Frank uh, next, and then maybe you can try calling back. Is that okay with you? How can we tell? <laughs> I told the box would light light up at least. <laughs> maybe you can send Morse code. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that either. Okay, I, you know, I'm sorry, Jim, but, but we just can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> can hear something. Who is that? Well, he just hung up. Oh, no, he didn't. Somebody mm -hmm. else hung up. <clears throat> I thought I heard background noise coming from his I know, I know. That's what I was thinking, too. Yep, we're ready for dinner. <laughs> Everybody's well, ready for dinner. We're going to go on to, to uh, KIHGW. Try, try calling us back, Jim. Hello. Oh, well. I know. I'm oh. sorry. I'm just... Now he's gone. Did you disconnect him? I disconnected him. Okay. Hi, Frank. Uh, so we have, we're having some trouble with uh, Jim, so we're going to give you the second spot. Now we can't hear you. Unmute You're yourself. Muted. He's muted, yeah. Good. I'm All right, muted. we got you now. We got you unmuted. <laughs> okay. All right. I want to thank everybody for having me this evening, and I want to say hi to Dan. I think it's the first time you and I have actually officially met. I think uh, so. 
face uh, do you want to call at during these crazy times? Uh, but uh, I'd like to start out with basically saying, when it came down to the vice director position, uh, there's not a bad apple in this bushel at all. Uh, you guys have really got the, the Great Lakes Division has probably the best election right now in the country because you've got you've got three people for vice director and two people for director that are just absolutely good guys. And of course, that always leads up to the, the next question of, okay, if everybody's really great, why are you running for it? And why are you better than the other two? And as as much as my friends know that I'm a very outspoken individual and they would just laugh their, out their butts off right now if they heard me say that. When it comes to talking about myself in this type of, in this type of realm, I'm really hard to really beef myself up, but let's give it a try. Uh, I think my mixture of amateur radio volunteering for the last 18 years, I've been licensed for 25, uh, officially joined uh, Quarter Century Wireless Association this year. Uh, finally made it to that goal. And for 18 years from the day that I was, literally the day I was licensed, I was pulled into, I was pulled into volunteer public service, uh, working the Columbus Marathon, getting involved with the Central Ohio ARES. And through that great organization, I went from assistant EC up to section manager. Uh, not skipping a single, not skipping a single appointment, uh, and held the, the section manager for Ohio until Mr. Yonley took over in 2014, when I kind of semi-officially retired from the volunteership uh, for AWRL. And during that time, the last seven years when I was out of the what I call the ARL inner circle, I really didn't see a whole lot of activity from the AWRL, with the exception of QST Magazine and going to the websites and, and working, you know, Logbook of the World and, and Chasing DX and everything else. And I had just kind of been wondering, you know, exactly what was the league really doing at that point for, for hams that, that weren't into the public service at that time, or maybe they weren't into, uh, uh, national traffic system or anything of that nature, so they really didn't know what was going on. And thank goodness, the last couple years, last year or two, the AWRL has really kind of woke up a little bit and has realized this. Maybe it was something with the past CEO that kind of was kind of giving a little bit of the warning flag, saying, "Hey, you know, our our hobby is growing in age, and we need to start looking at what we're going to do to." increase youth and maybe get some clientele and start building up the membership. And a couple of things they've done, I think they've done pretty well. They brought out the, the On the Air magazine. They got the Collegiate Amateur Radio Initiative going right now for colleges. Uh, they've really started, you know, getting into the teacher education. Uh, all these good things that, are, that have come around and we need to take that up a notch. And in the process of my volunteering, uh, even after AWRL, after 2014, I got involved in schools, mostly because my daughter was going from junior high into high school and I got pulled into parent booster groups with the orchestra and, and was a guard father for the color guard for the marching band. And, 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 and trust me, if you can, if you can have 26 teenage girls in your house and keep them under control, I think I can handle about anything at that point. Uh, the uh, administrating uh, VE teams is also what I did during that time and I had off. And one of the things that I'm, I'm really proud of right now is that I helped establish and I chair a support organization for the uh, W8LT station at <clears throat> the Ohio State University. Because uh, <laughs> doing my homework, I realized that, that, that your club's in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I respect you, friend. <laughs> but, uh, but 
heading that up, I've started seeing the real need of what we need to do to get youth involved in with the in, in with amateur radio, get that seed planted, get it get it growing well, and then once they get through college and once they start getting through some things in life that uh, they can take and uh, come back to this hobby and once they get their income established, build the station, get it on the air and start and start being vital and start being a vital part of the hobby again. And we need to keep that sustainability. So during that time when they're coming in and, and they're, how do I say, when, when, they're, when they're in that time frame and they're just starting to come in, I hope that there is a hobby still there. And if we don't keep the AWRL viable, we're not going to have a voice in Washington, D.C. We're not going to have much of a voice anywhere. And the FCC is going to probably start noticing that. And the next thing you know, they start doing what they do well, and that is start auctioning off frequencies so that they can make money. Uh, one of the couple of the things that I've done in, in during this is working with the uh, students at, at Ohio State and making sure that they're able to take and get access to the equipment, make sure they have good equipment to work with, making sure that they have classes, doing test sessions, making sure they're getting licensed. One of the biggest problems we've got right now, I think with about every other college, is the pandemic. And right now, my team is really taking a hard, serious look at trying to get remote access for that station so that when students, whether they're in their dorm, or anywhere else can be able to access and operate and get on the air because that's really where we need to plant the seed is is getting is getting people on the air getting them working you know thank goodness for for weak signals like ft8 ft4 uh it's allowed even the more seasoned hams who maybe have to uh downgrade their housing and maybe go into go into apartments or go into condos they're able to still work the world with a wire. And that's where we need to keep that, that spirit and that movement going. And things that AWRL is also doing with the lifetime learning program that they've started, that is going to be a tremendous asset to starting hams, seasoned hams, maybe hams who have just now started getting into a new mode. Uh, I've not gotten into DMR yet. I'm very curious about uh getting into that so i've been starting to kind of hit my wife up for all the uh all, for a little bit of extra money so i can go out and buy some toys because you know christmas is coming uh so i need something i need something to put on the list for santa uh the how do i say this the best way if you really want to learn about me and what i'm doing is to go to my website kiegw.net uh, over there, I've got background on myself. That way you don't have to hear the full story of the beginnings of Frank Piper. Uh, I was born at the young age of zero, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the background I have, the visions that I have, uh, I've been doing some, some recording of some chats with Frank, uh, so you can kind of hear it from the horse's mouth as to what I, what I want to do and where I want to go. But you know, really when it comes down to it, it's the vice director is the support mechanism for the director. And when we start going into a boardroom for AWRL, it's not like being a section manager, it's not like being an EC, it's not like being a, uh, a, a volunteer in the field service. You're going into a boardroom and you are making policy decisions and things that are going to keep the organization and the company going. That's from appointing CEOs to overseeing the operation of the business. And the business experience that I've had starting up a 501c3 for, for the Friends of W8LT, uh, working as a uh, treasurer for two booster groups through, through my daughter's high school years, and working in the engineering field and working with specifications and and making sure that the uh, things that we build don't kill people. 
uh, I feel gives me the, the, the very good mental balance to be able to go in, make decisions, help the director on, on, his, on his goals and what he wants to achieve. And I think if you could give me the opportunity to serve for the next three years, I think I could really help make a difference up there in the boardroom in Newington. And that's pretty much it for me. I know I have kind of rambled on a little bit too fast, a little bit too long. I try to practice the three B's of public speaking, and that is be clear, be precise, be seated. Uh, so let me open it up to you and see if you guys have any questions I can help answer. And I'm, I'm here for you. Well, I'll ask you the same question I asked the first guy. What, what about membership? Well, from what I've heard, and I don't know if you guys have noticed it or not, the annual report for 2019 just hit the AWR website today. Oh, and okay. once I got off work uh, and from home, by the way, my, my work spot is to my right uh, on another computer. So it's a really, it's a really long trip from, 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 from fun to work for me these days. Uh, once I got done with work, I pulled that down and started looking at it, and they're showing that membership is pretty well flat. It didn't decrease greatly overall through the entire organization, didn't increase a lot either. And I know that the Great Lakes Division has actually dropped a little bit in membership. So what do we do about that? I think that they need to, uh, I think they really need a strong retention committee. Uh, guys, how many times have you tried to quit Sirius XM or, or your cell phone company? And how many people have you had call you up and ask you, what did we do wrong? What can we do to keep you on our service? And then they start making all these, all these offers to help keep you. If you ever decide to quit AWRL, does anybody ever contact us? Uh, no. And I know that for a fact because my very, very first year, I joined AWRL, the first year I was a ham. I didn't, not on purpose, but I didn't renew right away. And the next thing I know, I did get a card from them saying, hey, if you renew, you'll get a, you'll get a free book. And since then, I haven't heard anybody else get any sort of offers like that. Uh, I think that it's kind of just, that kind of just went away, but I think a better retention committee or, to, or a retention department up in Newington would benefit greatly because they would know one, why do you, why do you want to leave? Why, what are we not fulfilling in, in, your, in your experience for the hobby? And what can we do better? Not necessarily looking for, you know, a, 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 a reduction in membership or a free gift or anything, but to really truly find out, you know, what's going on. I think they're kind of out of touch with that. Okay, we have a, a question here from Jay, W-B-A-T-K-L. He okay. says, specifically, how do you see the ARRL, how do you see that the ARRL can assist you to get started? You know, I get a lot of phone calls because I run a VE team, and one of the calls I usually get from, from, from candidate prospects is, okay, I want to get into this hobby, where do I go? And that's one of the things that really kind of lacks attention. Because unless you know that the ARRL is out there, you don't know the ARRL is out there. Uh, I think they need to do a little bit more advertising in some other, in some other means. Uh, maybe going in, maybe advertising in other uh, documents, popular science, popular communication, any of the other magazines. Get some advertisement out there and start showing that, hey, we're here, and if you want to start the hobby, come see us and see all of our massive information that we can have for you. They got a market, they got to quit preaching to the choir. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Any other questions? Frank, I can ask you the same the same question I asked the uh, the last candidate as well. So, assuming you know coming in as a vice director, and and I hear what you're saying about you know ways that the league can improve. 
From a practical point of view, how do you see your voice? Do you feel like you really are going to have a voice uh, within the league to sort of move them in a direction that you would like them to move? How, how do you plan to actually do this influence to, uh, to make things better? Well, one of the things being a vice director, I definitely will not have the front row say. That's, that's the director's job. Uh, they're the ones that are going to get listened to. Uh, I, sometimes I think the vice director is kind of like the red-shirted ensigns. Uh, we're going to be the first one shot and killed when, when, when the phasers when come out. But uh, in, in all truthfulness, I think my voice can be worked very well through the director, uh, whoever gets elected, uh, work, work along with them. Uh, I, know, I know one time I was explained to by Gary Johnson that the directors sit around at one level of, of uh, and vice directors sit behind them in, in basically a secondary row. So I kind of look at that as the backseat driver position. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm sure the, that the director is going to turn around to me at some point and go, hey, what's the word on the street? What are you hearing? Uh, what, how, how should we handle this? How can we take and improve this better and, and keep communication going? And that's where I think my strength lies. I've, I've always said I'm kind of like the quiet force behind things. I'll get stuff moving. And even if it comes down to the point where I have to make it sound like somebody else's idea to be able to get that idea moved through, I've done that before. I've never played the ego card. If I think that the, if I can find a way to get an idea pushed through and I have to step back, maybe plant the seed and let it grow and let somebody else, you know, take the credit for it. The end goal is the same. We get the project or we get the goal done. And that's, that's where I think one of my strengths lies is the fact that I can be, I can be a force, but maybe not necessarily up there, you know, fist pounding on the desk and screaming. Thank you. And the one thing I should also add to, you know, there's a lot of times when you can sit there and act like the, like the third grader running for class president and say, you know, everybody's going to get free chocolate milk for lunch and everybody's going to get an extra recess and then not able to deliver it. And I can't do that because I'm going into a board. I'm going into an organizational board of, of a company and you need to know where things are at and how to work the system. A couple years ago, several years ago, I worked on the PRB1 for Ohio, worked with the state uh, government liaison, Nick Pittner. Took us a total of about four to five years, but by gosh, we got it through and we got it signed by the governor in 2012. And that's where I really kind of got the experience and really learned how to be the quiet force to get things done. Anybody else? Well, unfortunately, we haven't been able to connect to the third candidate. Okay. Unless uh, this user with three dots is our third candidate, but I don't think so. I don't want to take up any more time than what the first person had, so keep it all fair. Yeah, yeah. So I... I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I guess that ends the meeting, or at least this part. This part of it. Uh, uh, both I Tom and be there, and I have been trying to get a hold of uh, of uh, Jim, but to no yeah. avail. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, guys, three good candidates for vice director, two good candidates for director. You couldn't have a better election for anything this time around. Uh, I appreciate the time. I will leave with this though. Greatest gift that you can give to anybody is your time. Give me the votes and I will give you three years of that gift. And I appreciate the time this evening. Uh, glad to have seen everybody and have a great evening. Well, thanks for coming. Okay, 73. So, I have a general question for every, everyone else. So this is the first time I'm participating in an election. So you get sent the ballots. Is that how it works in mail and then you return it? Yes. Yeah. You get, as a matter of fact, ballots should be starting to be mailed out now through the, through okay. the U.S. Service. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to throw 50 cents on it to vote. So, 
It's not, yeah, because you know. Okay. <laughs> has Has anyone received one? I've not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay, good to know. Frank, what was your call sign again? I'm sorry, what was that? Frank, what was your call, call sign again? Call sign is Kilo India 8 Golf Whiskey. Thank you. And if you take and put .net to that, you'll go to my website and you can learn a little bit more about me. I had the .net part there. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll hold in front. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. 73. All right. 73, Frank. 73. Well, I guess that does it. I, I'm i really sorry we couldn't get that third guy in here. Who was the third guy? K-A-J-H, uh, who, uh, I don't know, Tommy, maybe you can tell us a few things about him? Hang on, hang on, let me unmute you. Wait, 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 let me unmute you. It's not working. It's not working. Here, I did okay, it. Try. You both did it. Now it's, he's on mute again. Yeah, now he's muted again. <laughs> Here, I'll try it. That's not working. Can you unmute yourself, Tab? Okay, Tab, now I got it. There you go. Yes. There we go. Okay, uh, I, I've known Jim for about four years. I don't know what happened. Um, he, is a, uh, he is a deacon in the Catholic Church, and he could have been called out on a, uh, on a critical uh, situation. I don't know. Uh, Jim uh, has been licensed since 1972, um, and I just know he's he's quite active in the Grand Rapids area on the west side. So that, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to do about the Buckeye vote. Uh, <laughs> vote early, vote often. Can we do that? Um, uh, and I, I know it's my friend Mike uh, KB8 KB who's on the screen here. He I don't know if he got a hold of Jim on the phone. We've tried to text him, but uh, be that as it may, um, I'm very sure he has a good reason on there. Uh, and Jim just has been a, uh, like me, by the way, you talk about the cost of lifetime membership. I got mine when I was 22. And if you look at my face, that was over a half a decade ago. So I've, uh, I've got half a century ago. So I've, uh, I've done pretty good on that. Um, a lot of concerns Jay, from a lot of people. Jay, well, Jay, Jay's ne Jay never fails to tell us what a good deal he got when he was Yeah, yeah. I, the payoff, the, the price increase came pretty quick. The payoff was like seven years. But anyway, as far as Jim goes, I know he's been involved in emergency management in the years past, uh, the local clubs. Uh, he's been an uh, official observer for a long time, and that just got reorganized, and he is one of the very few people Maybe I'm not supposed to say that. Maybe that's one of those confidential things with a, with a <laughs> FEMA or something like that. Uh, so he got, he made the list on that. Um, so I don't know what else I can say about Jim. Uh, the other gentleman said a very good point. We have uh, three very good candidates. Uh, very impressive. Um, like I say, I, by the way, I do have one question for anybody. Anybody. I'd like to just one simple trivia question. We're the Great Lakes Division. Could anybody name me one Great Lake that touches Here's Kentucky? <laughs> just one just one yeah. I'm listening. I, I've, I've always wondered how kentucky got into the great lakes area. i don't I, I i don't understand that but i i digress um it's a great place to visit and uh, uh for a vacation i love the place but um um i don't really know off the hand i'm, I'm caught off guard dan i do want to appreciate to you and the uh, ann arbor club uh doing this with a zoom is very uh a very uh, proper thing very nice thing to do well, I, I get thank Don ACATO who oh, set this up. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but but it is good to get a little bit of a little bit of a background from somebody who knows it. All right, I guess that's it. Thank you I all very in, much. I am intrigued by the letter S on the bottom row there. Um, <laughs> the three that's dots. Right. Oh, but not Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I try. I've tried chatting that person, and I got no response. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting because it shows up in the chat menu. It kind of looks like it's a dividing line between two halves of the chat list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I, you know, I don't know what to say. Uh, Dan, I've been listening to your conversation uh, with the two guys, and you guys don't know me. I'm on another Zoom group too, and. Uh, it's quite interesting listening to guys in the U.S. Um, while I'm busy on FTA here. And I've been a Hammond for 27 years. 
I am a member of the South African Radio League. I haven't been a member, but um, it's quite interesting listening to different ideas and different things. Um, I just went on Facebook and I came from this uh, this Zoom uh, meeting, and uh, it's uh, one fifty one uh, Thursday morning here in South Africa, um, oh, and it's quite interesting listening to everybody is giving their opinion and uh, well we don't have clubs like that in South Africa that um, their own opinion doesn't matter you can have more politics involved than anything else uh, well things still yeah. do matter here so <laughs> thanks for joining Tom so we have some DX here so yeah. Yeah. I'm busy on I'm busy on FT8 on 40 meters at the moment um, uh, I'll go till three o'clock and uh, I'll see what what I can do. I've made 67 kilos so, so far for the week. So, uh, but bank conditions aren't good. Um, Soda flares, um, it's creating havoc. But I won't keep you guys. You want to go and do something else. But uh, thanks for me joining you and uh, seeing what it's all about. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Yeah. All right. All right then. Yes, that's it. Um.